Hi, my name is Jory, and uh, we have here Rabina Anji. Did I correct? Did I pronounce that correctly? You did. Great. So um, we're starting a new series here. It's the Generalist OT, and you are an occupational therapist. That's correct. So. What is an occupational therapist? <laughs> yeah, we get that a lot. Um, that's probably the first question that I ask my clients is, do you know what an occupational therapist is? Um, so just in a nutshell, occupational therapists um, assess an individual, but they assess them while they're interacting with their environment and engaging in the tasks that they need to complete day to day. So that's where the word occupation comes from. It's pretty much anything that occupies a person's time. So work, leisure, uh, you know, recre sorry, leisure is recreation. So, um, you know, any type of vocational activities, uh, self-care. So we, you know, even mobility, we look at, um, you know, how are they able to perform their day to day tasks and where are some of the barriers and then we look to addressing that. Um, it can get a little confusing of what we do because we have so much overlap with other disciplines, um, but we look at the person as an entire whole. Uh, so we consider mental health, we consider cognition, we consider their physical abilities, we consider their senses, so, you know, vision, touch, uh, uh, smell, if that's important okay. to what they're doing, right? Okay. Um, and, um, yeah, we try to find ways to help them accomplish those tasks. Okay, okay. That's interesting, yeah, because I know for myself, I don't have a lot of experience with occupational therapists, um, but that's good for that explanation. Thank you. So, um, so you're an occupational therapist. Uh, what's the name of your business? It's called Abilities Occupational Therapy. Okay. And how long have you been in business for now? Oh wow. Um, we're pretty new. I mean, we've been in business for about five years now. I would say. Okay. Um, I just. You know, I started my business when I went into private practice. So prior to that, I worked for Alberta Health Services for many, many years and in different areas. So I used to work in Slave Lake and, uh, you know, into Red Earth and Wabasca and uh, the north the north area of Alberta okay. quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I, I actually was fortunate in that I got a lot of experience in different practice areas when I was working with Alberta Health Services. And then when I left Alberta Health Services and started my own private practice, it really has served me well, um, having had the opportunity to work in so many different areas. Okay, great. Can you give me an example of some of those areas? Just high level, it doesn't need to be specific, but yeah, I'm sure. just sort of curious for my own knowledge, because again, I, I don't have a lot of it experience with occupational therapists. So. Yeah, no worries. So I first started in pediatrics and okay. I worked with the schools. Um, so it was a lot of, you know, working with children who had some developmental delays and how do we facilitate their learning and help them to achieve some of those um, developmental milestones like can do something as easy as, you know, a pencil grasp, right? Or establishing hand dominance, um, some of those kinds of things. But it was it was interesting because in the north I was one of very few occupational therapists so I got to work with the adult population later on where I did home care, um, I did acute care, I got to do some uh, splinting uh, for hand injuries and fractures and that sort of thing. Um, when I moved to Edmonton, I worked at the Royal Alex, so I got to do a little bit of um, plastics. So I worked with some uh, plastic surgeons who were doing you know, tendon repairs and fractures again, and so I did a lot of static splinting and, uh, you know, uh, just doing some, like, small exercise programs. It was generally with physios that led the exercise programs, but uh, we did get some recommendations for that as well. Um, I did, oh God, I worked, I've done a lot of lower leg assessments. Um, I've done, you know, even for, like, the diabetic population. I have worked in seniors and family medicine. I've worked on the pulmonary unit at the U of A. Uh, I've done coverage in cardiology and burns and uh, some more plastics. And what else have I done, Josh? Well, it, a it, lot. It sounds like a lot, yeah. So <laughs> a lot. It, it, that makes me kind of wonder, like, so 
what it sounds like you covered the whole gambit, but yeah. what sort of an education did you need to become an occupational therapist? So when I graduated, it was in 2005, and at that time, it was a bachelor's degree program at the University of Alberta, and it's okay. since uh, turned into a master's program. So okay. um, I and many of my um, colleagues that graduated with me had to have a background in anatomy and uh, human physiology. Uh, once we got into the program, we had some uh, you know, anatomy classes, we had to do surface anatomy, we did cadaver labs where you actually go in and see you know, people who have uh, been dissected and they've uh, I don't know, donated their body to science. Um, so you had had no hands-on experience? Had had hands-on okay. experience, yep, okay. yep. Even when we didn't want to, it was right there. Um, and then we do a lot of um, physiology, so we did actually some exercise physiology courses. Okay. Um, we also cover mental health. There were other things that we covered, like you know how to assess somebody for mobility aids, like wheelchairs. How do you measure for a wheelchair? Mm -hmm. What other adaptive aids are there? I know there was a there were like other modules that you could do if you were interested, and I did a one on splinting because I, I found yeah. that interesting. Um, there's just so much, but we basically graduate from the um, Faculty of Rehabilitation Medicine, mm -hmm. and that's the same as for physiotherapists and speech language pathologists. They also um, complete their degree in rehabilitation medicine. Okay. So. It, it, it almost sounds like, so if someone has something in their day-to-day -day life they're struggling to try to figure out or work with, you would be a, a very good starting point to say, I need an occupational therapist, I need help in this area, but there's some other areas that are affecting it or contributing to it. So like someone like yourself, um, an occupational therapist, you would be a good starting point, and then you would do it. Like, so when someone contacts you, so where, where do they go from there? Like, is there an assessment or how, how does that all work? So typically with my um, company, we do a lot of contracts. So uh, for vet Veterans Affairs, for example, uh, Workers' Compensation Board, um, I've done medical legal work as well. So somebody's in a motor vehicle accident and now we get a referral from a lawyer because they need to be assessed uh, for damages, right? Um, they can't function quite the same as they did before their injury, right, whatever that injury is. Okay. Um, with schools, we often get referrals. Again, it's it's through contracts that we've established um, with different, uh, you know, school authorities. I did a contract for Northland School Division, for example, where there's a, a few schools that needed occupational therapy services for, for their students. Okay. When it comes to the general public, it's it gets a little tricky because, you know, insurance does now cover occupational therapy services, but I think people don't, like you said, people don't know what an occupational therapist does, such as yeah. yourself, and that's that's pretty common. You get that a lot. So okay. you don't really know what to ask for from your insurance company if you don't even know what it is that we do. So when I get questions or people reach out to me on my website, it's because they have children usually who need occupational therapy services, okay. um, like fine motor skills and so on. <clears throat> I do feel bad that they have to pay out of pocket. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of want to do a series of videos um, looking at different areas. So for example, I'm driving evaluations. Again, not everybody can afford it, so often we will go to the Glen Rose, but there's quite a big you know, wait list. And Love the Glen, it. exactly. Okay. They do things that we just don't have the capacity to do because we're not as big as the Glen Rose, but there are other vehicle adaptations that we can do that the Glen Rose does, but people don't necessarily have to wait as long to get those ones. Mm -hmm. But they are a little bit more expensive, right, on our end, um, because we are private practice. Um, and so one of the series that I want to do is just talking a little bit about driving evaluations and what they are and what kind of modifications we do as a company. Um, you know, and what what does what kind of an impact would that have on the individual when they're driving and uh, give a little bit of education on that. Okay. Um, the other thing that I get is, you know, 
it's a somebody who's a senior okay. and um, or somebody who uh, needs some sort of a mobility aid like a scooter or a wheelchair or a lift and they're you know just from the community and they're reaching out to see can an occupational therapist help me um, again it's it's that cost sometimes that's the barrier or the fee that's the barrier so mm -hmm. i'd like to do a series of videos where i'm just giving some general tips for seniors you know okay. living independently in the community and how do we keep them in their homes longer and, yeah. and that sort of thing you mentioned earlier uh veterans affairs can you elaborate on that a little bit yeah, so Veterans Affairs Canada is uh, one of the first contracts that I started doing on my own. Um, it's amazing the stuff that they do for veterans, um, mm -hmm. but it's basically providing supports for them. So uh, typically, I'll, and it's very similar for WCD as well. Um, I go into a person's home because they've gotten a referral, they're having you know something um, difficulty just with uh, certain day-to-day -day activities. Okay. Could be mobility. It could be uh, you know housekeeping. It could be snow removal. Whatever it is. So their injury is impacting their ability to perform that in some way. And so my job is to review their um, medical history, kind of review the injury, mm -hmm. um, and then as a clinician, I also know what I'm looking for mm -hmm. when I'm assessing the individual for that injury. And basically, I'm watching them the entire time to see, you know, how is it uh, impacting their ability to, to complete certain things in their environment. So, for example, let's say that somebody has really bad mobility and now they can't get in and out of their house. Okay. Um, so now they can't access their community. So what do we do? We would go in and see, uh, you know, do they have, what are the physical limitations that they have? And what are the environmental barriers? So if they have stairs and they need a ramp, then we would put in the um, uh, recommendation for them to have a ramp built. Okay. But there's a lot of resources out there for people who can't afford it because they're not a veteran or they're not with workers' compensation board because it's not a work-related injury. But I think often people don't know what is out there, yeah. um, right? So that's the other thing that I really want to help people navigate is, um, you know, there are some nonprofits that will actually help with procuring, uh, you know, power mobility for someone. But there's an application yeah. process for that. Um, there are also some uh, some government funding that's available for seniors uh, benefits. Yeah. And how do you access that? How do you, what, what is what do they need even, right? So like, for example, there's a program called the RAMP program. Yeah. Um, I know because when I worked with other health services, they would often use the RAMP program where the government will give a certain amount of money to modify an individual's home to make it more accessible. So okay. let's say you're in your 80s and you had a hip fracture and now you're not able to climb up and down the stairs. And this is something that's not going to get better. There's no real... Um, you know, the prognosis is such that it's, you know, it is what it is. Their, their mobility isn't going to improve a significant amount, yeah. but they want to continue living in their home. So how do we support that? Well, the RAMP program will actually um, look at the application and uh, it does, there has to be an occupational therapy assessment, of uh -huh. course, but they can have a stair lift or a stair chair, as it's called, installed in their home so that they don't have to worry about climbing stairs and they can live in their home a little bit more independently. And then what else do they need, right? Do they need something to help them with bathing? Um, do they need something to help them with getting dressed because now they can't bend as much to reach their toes? How do they get their socks on? How do they, you know, complete uh, making a meal for themselves? So really, it, it, it almost sounds like, I mean, I know we brought this up before, I was just trying to clarify a little bit as, as I'm listening and understanding it better. It's like you're coming and assessing and giving the recommendations for things that they might not realize that they need help with or they don't know how to ask for help, exactly. how to get the help, or what is even available out there. So you as an occupational therapist, you can then make those suggestions and you can improve their quality of life. I guess, I guess is kind of simply what I'm saying here. Absolutely. Okay. But I, I okay. do think that um, there is a caveat to that, and that's that, you know, it's, a bedroom doesn't solve everybody's problem of getting out of bed. So yes. 
Um, yes, I do want to provide some general information, but that's not meant to replace um, an occupational therapy assessment because mm -hmm. the, the last thing that I would want is somebody to think, oh, she said that a bed reel is going to help me get in and out of bed, so that's what I'm going to get, and now they're going to their money. Um, and I'll give you a perfect example of why an occupational therapist is so important. Um, you know, I had a client uh, that I was seeing, and I went into her home, and she said to me, you know, I was provided with a bed rail, but I can't use it because I can't use my right arm. And I can't roll onto my right arm to grab it with my left because I can't tolerate the pressure in my right side. And nor can I like, uh, lay on my left side to use the right because I can't use my hand functionally for that. So when I was doing the assessment, I recognized that she actually had some really good core strength. And I thought if I could just increase the head of her bed, she could probably use her ass just to like get herself sitting up and get off the bed. Yeah. Um, so I said, you know, let's try positioning wedge. And we just put a bunch of pillows to kind of simulate it. And mm -hmm. she did it and she's like, wow, this is so easy. Okay. And that was the solution, right? Um, yeah. Every bath chair isn't the same because there are so many other things to consider that a technician might come in and say, oh yeah, you need a bath seat, but we, when we do an assessment, we're looking at function, right? We're looking at their musculoskeletal system. We're looking at what other areas um, do they have strengths in? Mm -hmm. Like, what are their abilities, and how do we work with that? Um, it's not as simple as just giving somebody a bath suit or a bed rail yeah. and saying, okay. "There you go, you're independent now." <laughs> that, no, that that's good to know because I mean, again, I'm sure many of you viewers out there, you're wondering, well, what. If, what is an occupational therapist that do? And I'm glad that you were able to explain it to me and to the viewers as well, so we have a much better idea of sort of what to ask for and what even realm you're gonna sort of help them with. So yeah. that that's really great. I'm I, I'm really glad that we spent the time to sit down and talk about it. You can tell me a little bit more, and the viewers as well. And um, so again, um, tell tell me the name of your business and how to get a hold of you. And do you have a website? And you know, like yeah, give me give me the, the quick little sales pitch. I know that okay. probably is a good thing to say, but no, it's, it's exactly yeah. what to say. Yeah. Um, so our company is called Abilities Occupational Therapy. That was really important to me because I think we all have strengths. And we want to work with people's abilities. Yes, we work with people who have physical barriers, mental, cognitive barriers, you know, sensory issues, but mm -hmm. but that doesn't define the individual as a whole. And so there, we all have strengths, and that's what we want to work with. So that's kind of why we chose abilities, occupational therapy. And um, I do have a website. We're still adding to it. Uh, we want to put up some resources for parents. Uh, and that's going to also include our um, series that I'm going to be doing for the YouTube channel, okay. which is uh, the Generalist OT. Um, yeah, because it's just I, I have a lot of experience. I should say a lot of experience. I have quite a decent amount of experience in different clinical areas. So I consider myself to be a generalist with some a few niche areas of practice. Um, but those videos are available on our website as well as some you know, resources that people can actually download. Um, okay. So that'll be application forms for different types of equipment or resources for parents if their child is struggling with you know, fine motor skills and, yeah. and whatnot. Good. Well, there you have it. You've met Ravita Danji, located in Edmonton, Alberta. Okay. Canada, of course. Us Canadians always need to clarify that. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm really grateful that you spent the time to you know, explain that to me and um, we'll keep you guys posted on more videos and uh, yeah, just keep your eyes on the channel and uh, we'll hear more from Lina. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.